So it's time to prep up the stuffing for this turkey. So when I was a kid, I used to hate stuffing and uh, didn't understand what the big deal was. Then I learned how to make my own stuffing from scratch. And now I'm a convert. Uh, I guess when I was a kid, people were always making stovetop stuffing, which is a pre-mixed stuffing you can get from the store. And it's really quite vile, in my opinion. But if you make your stuffing from scratch, like I'm going to show you today, it's freaking delicious. The first step to making good stuffing is to use good bread. This is a organic sourdough bread from a local bakery. Try and cut it into cubes. Hey, <laughs> do you want a little piece of bread? You can have one. There you go, bud. Cat loves loves this bread, which is a good sign to me. But don't worry if it's not perfect. It gets a bit mushy when it's cooking anyway. And then put those in there. So now I've got about that much breading in there. I'm gonna go with a couple more slices. So once you got about that much, I guess that's about four slices of bread. So I have a nice uh, red onion today. My trick for onions is to cut diagonally up top, and cut diagonally on the bottom, then take a shallow slice, and I take off a little bit more peeling than you might. Uh, a, because I compost it, so I'm not too worried about saving every little piece, and also because I hate getting those tough pieces of onion um, that you get when you try and salvage as much as possible. You can try to keep the form of the onion as you do this part. Some bits get away on you, but it's a real quick way of cubing up an onion. So once you have it nicely cubed up, you can add that to your stuffing mix. So you end up with your bread and your onion mix. The next thing I like to put in there is a few cloves of garlic. I'm going to use all those. The quickest way to peel garlic is to give it a light crush with the edge of your knife. That one is already peeled. Don't go overboard here. Don't like mash the ever-living life out of it. Just give it a light crush and then the peels usually come right off for you. I like to give them a quick rinse under the cold water, then take off the stem bits, then slice them. I'm actually gonna put a couple of extra cloves in there. Got this really nice red Russian garlic. Add a few of those. Side crush with your knife. These guys are pretty firm. They smell really good too. It's the same idea. Trim off the bits nobody likes to eat. Slice them. Oh yeah, these are definitely the superior garlic. And then to really get the taste out, you want to mince them. We're looking like that. We've got our cut up bread, our cut up uh, onion, and our cut up garlic in there. Next, what I like to put in there is some celery. That should do. So there's our washed celery. Again, because I compost, I'm okay being a bit aggressive here. I don't like to get the uh, woody, stringy bits in there as much. Oh, there's one for the monster that lives between the cupboard and the stove. Let's take the bases off, take the tops off, just go for the high grade. With the bigger ones I like to carve down the middle, cut them in half basically. The smaller ones are fine. So they're all nice and small like that. Throw that into your mix. And there's how we're looking now. There's the usual suspects, my uh, beloved Himalayan pink rock salt, in this case, 
savory is good. Black peppercorns. So I like to put in some sage. And I also like to put in poultry seasoning. Roughly a teaspoon of both. And then finally, I like to add just a little bit of olive oil. Give it a toss like you're making a salad. Just try and get all those spices evenly mixed in there. Then you end up with something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to stuff that hole full of our stuffing. Kind of stuff it in there. Try not to get too much in the bottom of your pan. If you get some in there, it's okay. But later when you're trying to baste the turkey, if there's all kinds of bread chunks, soggy bread chunks in the bottom, it can be really hard to pick up the fatty fluids because they clog the baster. Try and make sure that you get not only the bread, but also the chunks of stuff that go to the bottom so you don't end up with a whole bunch of bread and nothing else. First few times I did this, I just crammed the stuffing in there, but I've learned don't do that because if you make it too dense, uh, the center is actually the hardest to cook on a turkey. So if you cram that right in there, you end up with raw innards and kind of like lukewarm stuffing, and that's really gross. So all you want to do is kind of like gently compress it in there. That's looking pretty good to me. I try to make sure that I have I don't know, a good two inches, maybe even three inches of water in the base. So once you got all that set up, put the lid on. This is why I try and go for 14 pound turkeys. If I get massive turkeys, this lid doesn't go on all the way, and even now it's just barely going on. It's pretty much perfect, I'd say. Our oven is preheated to 325. I have the rack on the second lowest. there so it's centered. Set yourself a timer for half an hour. Every half hour I like to baste it. Some people say you don't have to do it every half hour. I find if I do it every half hour I make the most delicious, soft, tasty, moist turkey and everyone loves it. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more content please hit subscribe. See you next time.